We can get exact values of sine, cosine, and tangent for some special angles in standard position. Here we'll look at four angles that have a reference angle of 60 degrees. We'll start with the x and y axis and a circle. We'll put in the coordinates for the points where the circle and the axis intersect. We'll add an arrow showing the initial side at 0 degrees. We'll add a mark here at 60 degrees. We'll draw in a terminal arm here and label the principal angle as 60 degrees. We'll construct a table to record exact values for the four special angles we'll look at here. We'll add a right triangle here. In quadrant 1, the reference angle is the same as the principal angle, 60 degrees. The coordinates for this point are positive 1 half for x and positive root 3 over 2 for y. You may be wondering how we get these values for the coordinates. In the right triangle that we have here, the hypotenuse has a length of 1 because this is the radius of the circle. For a 30, 60, 90 triangle with a hypotenuse of 1, the shorter leg has a length of 1 half. We call the length of the longer leg y and we'll use some algebra to solve for it. Pythagoras tells us that y squared plus a half squared equals 1 squared. 1 half squared is 1 quarter. Subtracting 1 quarter from each side gives us this. And taking the square root of both sides gives us y equals root 3 over 2. So the x coordinate of this point is 1 half, and the y coordinate is root 3 over 2. Going back to our original diagram, 60 degrees is equal to pi over 3 radians. The sine of 60 degrees is y over r, which is positive root 3 over 2. Remember, for all the angles we're discussing here, r is equal to 1, the radius of the circle. The cosine of 60 degrees is x over r, which is positive 1 half. And the tangent of 60 degrees is y over x, which is positive root 3 over 2, divided by 1 half. Which is positive root 3 over 2 times 2, or simply, positive root 3. Notice the sine, cosine, and tangent are all positive values for this angle. This is true for all angles in the first quadrant. Now we'll put a mark over here in quadrant 2. This corresponds to a principal angle of 120 degrees. We'll draw an arrow here to show the terminal arm of this angle. The coordinates for this point are negative 1 half for x and positive root 3 over 2 for y. 120 degrees is equal to 2 pi over 3 radians. We'll draw in a right triangle here. The reference angle for the principal angle of 120 degrees is 60 degrees. The sine is y over r, which is positive root 3 over 2. And the cosine is x over r, which is negative 1 half. The tangent is y over x, which is positive root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half, or positive root 3 over 2 times negative 2. This works out to negative root 3. We see that the sine is positive and the cosine and tangent are both negative for this angle. This is true for all angles in quadrant 2. Now we'll put a mark here in quadrant 3. This corresponds to a principal angle of 240 degrees. We'll draw on an arrow to show the terminal arm of this angle. The coordinates are negative 1 half for x and negative root 3 over 2 for y. 240 degrees is equal to 4 pi over 3 radians. We'll draw in a right triangle here. The reference angle for 240 degrees is 60 degrees. The sine is y over r, which is negative root 3 over 2. The cosine is x over r, which is negative 1 half. And the tangent is y over x, which is negative root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half which is the same as negative root 3 over 2 times negative 2. This comes out to positive root 3. We see that in quadrant 3, the tangent is positive and the sine and cosine are both negative. This is true for all angles in quadrant 3. Now we'll put a mark over here in quadrant 4. This corresponds to a principal angle of 300 degrees. We'll draw an arrow here to show the terminal arm of this angle. The coordinates for this point are positive 1 half for x and negative root 3 over 2 for y. 300 degrees is equal to 5 pi over 3 radians. 
we'll draw in a right triangle here. The reference angle for the principal angle of 300 degrees is 60 degrees. The sine is y over r, which is negative root 3 over 2. The cosine is x over r, which is positive 1 half. And the tangent is y over x, which is negative root 3 over 2, divided by positive 1 half, which comes out to negative root 3. We see that in quadrant 4, the cosine is positive and the sine and tangent are both negative. This is true for all angles in quadrant 4. We'll label the four quadrants as 1, 2, 3, and 4, starting with 1 and moving counterclockwise. In quadrant 1, all of the values are positive, so we'll write an A in quadrant 1 for all. In quadrant 2, only the sine is positive and the cosine and tangent are negative, so we'll write an S in quadrant 2 for sine. In quadrant 3, only the tangent is positive, and the sine and the cosine are negative. So we'll write a t in quadrant 3 for tangent. In quadrant 4, only the cosine is positive, and the sine and the tangent are negative. So we'll write a c in quadrant 4 for cosine. We can remember these if we use a sentence, like all students take calculus. Here's a summary of the four angles we looked at, the reference angles, their coordinates, and all their values. Make sure you're very familiar with these and you can determine which values are positive and which values are negative.